Our Earth is an amazing place, finely tuned for our ability to not only survive, but thrive in a high-tech global civilization. It did not have to be this way. Planetary formation models show that the formation of this kind of an Earth is nearly inconceivable. The events that led to Earth's development can show that we humans have a high purpose and therefore much hope. Here we will briefly summarize a few of these events. We must first be amazed at the timing and conditions of the formation of our solar system and Earth in terms of having the right elements in the right quantities in the interstellar medium. Uranium and thorium are essential elements for plate tectonics and building continents. They are only produced in supernova eruptions which decline as the universe ages. Radiometric decay serves to decrease the overall quantity of these elements as time passes. Their peak abundance happened as the decay rate began to overtake the creation rate, and it turns out that this happened about 9 billion years after the Big Bang, right when the Earth was forming. Had the Earth formed any earlier, there may not have been time for the production of enough of these elements, and had it been any later, too much may have decayed. Planetary formation models show that a planet with Earth's mass at its distance from the Sun should have a very thick atmosphere, much thicker than that of Venus. Earth, however, does not. It is also incredibly improbable that a moon that is so large relative to its planet would form, but Earth has it. A model that seems to explain both of these phenomena is that a Mars-sized planet collided with the early Earth. The core of the collider combined with Earth's core and ejected its thick atmosphere, which coalesced to form our moon. In order for this to happen, the collider had to be made of the just right materials and hit the Earth at the just right velocity and angle. Had it been different in any way, Earth would certainly be barren today. From about 3.8 to 3.9 billion years ago, a 2 to 1 orbital resonance between Jupiter and Saturn gravitationally disturbed objects in the Kuiper Belt, sending many asteroids into the inner solar system, more than 17,000 of them hitting the Earth. The impact of these events would have vaporized any water on the Earth and left the crust in a molten state on numerous occasions. If any life had existed before this time, it certainly would not have survived this event. However, it did serve to build up masses of elements which would later be essential to advanced life. Evidence shows that life arose on Earth earlier than 3.8 billion years ago, only a geologic instant after the asteroid bombardment. There is also absolutely no evidence for any primordial soup, which is widely supposed to be part of a naturalistic origin of life event. If it had existed, it would have left chemical fingerprints in the early rocks, but none are to be found. Life's early origin is very important. Only with 3.8 billion years of accumulated biomass would we have enough fossil fuels to enjoy a high-tech civilization. We can conclude that our Creator intervened to create life at the absolute earliest possible moment that Earth would have allowed it. When the Earth was 1 to 2 billion years old, there was a dramatic increase in continent formation. Prior to this time, the Earth was mostly a water world, with a few isolated islands. During this period, most of the 29% landmass we have today was formed. This only would have been possible with the high amounts of uranium and thorium that were only possible at this point in the universe's history. This nearly one-third of the Earth's surface covered by continents is important, as is the exact configuration of the land masses that we now enjoy. Weather patterns and nu nutrient cycling are affected very heavily by the arrangement of the land. While it is certainly possible that other configurations could have worked, it is clear that what we have now is ideal for a wide variety of climactic regions and biodiversity, and it did not have to be that way. The Sun's luminosity has increased significantly throughout the history of the Earth, yet even a slight difference in the light we receive would be catastrophic. In the early days of the solar system, the sun was extremely bright, perhaps brighter than it is now. Then its brightness plunged to some 15% below its current level. From there, it increased slowly and continues to do so. To maintain equilibrium, the intensity of the solar radiation, the amount of greenhouse gases such as carbon dioxide and methane, the reflectivity of the Earth's surface, and the life forms on Earth, would have had to be kept in perfect balance. If any of these had diverged from what actually happened, Earth would have gone into a state of runaway global warming or a permanent snowball. Yet it is difficult to imagine how any naturalistic process could have done this perfectly, as such processes could not possibly foresee the future brightness of the sun.
There were at least two periods in Earth's history where the planet did experience runaway glaciation, or close to it. Around 2.4 billion years ago, and again, between 800 and 600 million years ago, Earth experienced snowball Earth events. Virtually the entire surface of the planet, possibly excluding a thin band around the equator, was covered by thick ice. Life could have survived in thermal vents, under the oceans, and in land around geothermically active areas such as Yellowstone and Iceland. The escape from this event would have been due to volcanic activity. The oceans would have become very rich in metals and carbon dioxide, which would have burst through the surface ice in a likely spectacular display, initiating greenhouse-based warming. If one takes a naturalistic view, it is easy to see how, if this had been any different, future life on Earth would have been much different, including us. From a design perspective, we can know that the Creator carefully prepared the planet for future higher animal life. This is one of the many steps he would have used to carry out his plan. At the end of the last snowball Earth event, animal life would have still been very simple. Worm-like creatures and possibly jellyfish would have been the most complex living things. Around 540 million years ago, that all changed in a geologic instant. Over a few tens of millions of years at the most, representatives of most of the animal phyla that have ever existed burst onto the scene. These included the amazing trilobites, seafloor scavengers with rather complex bodies including sophisticated eyes, antennas, gills, spines, and various complex appendages. Although not the first animal life, these creatures appear so suddenly in the record that naturalistic explanations struggle to make sense of the data. Continuing on from the Cambrian era, a pattern emerges that repeats itself a number of times throughout the remainder of Earth's history. At several points in the last few hundred million years, the fossil record shows evidence for mass extinction events whereby many to most species of animal life went completely extinct in a very short period of time. These events were triggered by various causes, varying from volcanic eruptions to atmospheric change to meteor impacts. The two best known events were the Permian extinction about 251 million years ago, in which over 75% of all species went extinct, and the KT extinction 65 million years ago, which caused the extinction of the dinosaurs and almost half of all other species on Earth. The amazing thing about these events is that they are always followed by mass radiation events in which whole ecosystems of new species, including complex predator-prey relationships, appear very quickly after the extinction. These new species are more advanced than the ones they replaced and serve to further prepare the Earth for species to follow, including human beings. Finally, after 3.8 billion years, years of life, and after about 600 million years of progressively complex animals, modern humans came onto the scene about 50 to 100,000 years ago. Some 13.7 billion years after the creation of the universe by way of a singularity, we exist in the perfect window of time to see cosmic history. Because for a time space stretched out faster than the speed of light, if we had lived any earlier, light from the earliest galaxies would not have had time to reach us. If we had lived any later, the accelerating expansion of space would stretch us away from this earliest light faster than it could travel toward us. Either way, we would be ignorant of the fact that all things in the universe, even including space and time dimensions themselves, came into existence in a singularity. This singularity is one of the best pieces of evidence we have that the universe must have been made by an agent independent of space and time and able to create space and time dimensions at will. We would also be ignorant of this if we lived in another location in the universe. Virtually all the places in the universe have so much nearby light, or have other objects in the way, that their inhabitants would simply be blind to the light from the universe's first objects. The evidence could not be clearer that someone wants us to discover what he has done. There are also some amazingly short time windows for which human beings could thrive on planet Earth. The sun has to be in a stable middle-aged state and be between galactic spiral arms. The atmosphere had to be in an ideal state. There has to be a sufficient buildup of biomass to support advanced civilization. There is also an amazing window for perfect total solar eclipses. These events helped early humans measure time, and more recently, they allowed us to easily perform a test for general relativity. That these and other time windows overlap with modern humans is quite remarkable. What does all this say about the universe, us human beings, and our creator? It seems clear that he had us in mind when he designed the universe. It also says that he is highly intelligent and personally involved. Given that he has these attributes, we would also expect that he would be interested in being personally involved in our lives. 
As Christians, we believe and experience this. But it goes farther than that. Ephesians 2.10 in the Net Bible says, For we are his workmanship, having been created in Christ Jesus for good works that God prepared beforehand so that we may do them. This same Creator, who exists outside of space and time dimensions and can create them at will, personally designed you and has an exciting plan for your life. If you pursue it, you will be richly blessed.